Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our flight into the ancient language. I'm a lifetime user of this language. Still, I have a lot to learn uh, because the version I learned is simplified Chinese. And when I look at the formation of the characters, it's always something new discovery for me. So last time we talked about Xiao Bie Sheng Xinhun. Xiao Bie Sheng Xinhun uh, talks about the phenomenon that um, for a couple to be separated uh, in a short term and then reunion, it feels better than um, newlywed. Um, so today I'm going to express um, newlywed. So how that feels like um, in Chinese expression, Xin Kun Yan Er is a description of how uh, the newlywed feels like, um, almost like a sparrow do. Okay, so there we go. Dive into each individual characters. Xin, uh, we have the right side, is the X sign that shows you the result of uh, using X to cut off the lock. So this is the main lock, and then this portion is the piece that's cut off. So X as a tool, it was not shown the shape of the X, but it shows the result, the effect of the X. Okay, on the left side, the bottom here is a tree symbol. So it has a big arch toward the bottom. Um, someone corrected me to say this doesn't, uh, this arch is not a spacer that this arch is the root of the tree. It's, it could be explained that way. Um, but then I may want to question if the it's the root of the tree, um, why it doesn't show a, a horizontal line to show that it's below the surface. Because to me, this visually looks like above the surface uh, of the ground. And um, for a tree to become a tree, it need to have a tall trunk. Otherwise it's classified as a bush. A shrub or um, some low, low growing plant. But this, the tree as a tree, it has this feature, it, it, it has to stand tall. So this arch in my previous interpretation is the, shows the spacer between the canopy, which is top upward pointing uh, three pointers toward the sky. So that's the canopy of the tree. And then the bottom, the bigger arch shows that the trunk really is distanced from the bottom of the tree. Anyways, in any case, all we need to know um, is, oh, okay, this is not a tree. Okay, is um, we have upper pointing arch, bottom pointing arch, and then connected by this vertical line that symbolize the visual of a tree. This top portion is said to be an ancient uh, copper punishment tool. So in contemporary prison practice, uh, we don't really punish prisoners, right? Um, I mean, I don't exactly know. As far as I heard on the media, prisoners were just punished by isolation, by confinement, by the, you know, taken away. Um, a freedom of mobility, right? Um, but they, they don't get inflicted uh, a pain on their body. But that's not the practice in ancient societies. So in ancient Chinese, all kinds of tools to make you feel pain. And so that instill the fear among people. So they consider the price to pay if they commit a certain crime, right? So that's, that was said to be a certain kind, kind of a corporal punishment tool uh, for the wrongdoers. Um, and eventually this extends to be the authority. You know, this fear um, instilling tool becomes symbol of authority um, or courtroom, something like that. So the whole thing in my interpretation would be this uh, courtroom featured punishment tool together with the wood symbol and this ax symbol. So ax act on wood, there's some sound generated and um, I can almost see it as making the tool 
this corporal punishment newly from the lock. Uh, so that's how the whole thing eventually, you know, we forgot about the, the word, the ax, or the courtroom symbol, or the authority symbol, but the whole thing becomes like, because this shows the process of, not process, shows the action to make, because you're working on it, right, with the ax, working on wood, to, to carve out such kind, such kind of tool uh, to punish people. So this newly make thing, this new <laughs> live on instead of all the other elements that can come up with a story. Okay, long enough. So there's a definition of, um, or description of the hun. Hun is the practice of a wedding, I guess, ancient practice wedding. So because the, you know, the ceremony was different, totally different from the Western wedding, uh, the whole theme, the way it was carried out, it was very distinctly different. Um, so the left side is woman. So definitely hun, uh, hun mostly speaks in a perspective of the groom. So it's a guy who finally get a woman. In ancient Chinese, probably today, so in contemporary China, to be able to get married, to be able to, you know, have have a girl in your household is a is a major uh, endeavor. It may takes wealth of two generations to accumulate enough wealth to look attractive enough to bid almost like on a tight uh, wedding market uh, or dating market um, to attract a girl because of uh, gender imbalance over there. That's what I heard anyways. Um, the woman symbol, so it's the essential piece. Okay, so <laughs> that's woman you finally invited to your household um, and then the right side means sunset. We have the sun symbol, this oval shape with horizontal line. So oval describes the sphere, right? The horizontal line describes the energy. So it's burning. So even from ancient um, observers' eyes, we can see that the sun is emitting heat or energy from it. It's not an empty sphere just hanging there, right? It's not decorative, it's a functional, it's a major energy source, you know, uh, to earth. So this horizontal line means energy indicating something coming out of it. Uh, it's not just a shape, okay? The right top here is a sign to show something going down. So I guess this is an indicator of going down. Uh, I'm not going to deep to to that because I don't that that part is blurry to me of why this shape actually means going up. This elongated line it's totally stylized in its original form. It doesn't uh, extend this long, but because it forms a character with the bottom this symbol to show it's one unit. So this line got elongated. So the two you know spatially have a certain interaction. It shows that they are locked into one symbol. It's not separate, right? Um, so together means the sun is going down. It's a sunset because ancient practice um, to 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 have a wedding. You uh, send out a group of people uh, having a carriage uh, or men like a mostly four men hold. Uh, hold up this um, carriage that's kind of, uh, you know, with their every full step are going to go up and down um, to uh, carry the girl from her household to his household. And this practice done during close to the sunset time. So it's almost like, okay, so the girl don't have to, um, you know, facing the sun, facing the sunset time. So probably the girl doesn't have to uh, feel too bad because it's immediately bedtime. You don't have to think about your parents because that's a, a major transition for for the girl, right? It's leaving its, I don't know, uh, decades of living environment, move completely to another household. So this um, is, hun, is wedding. So newly wed, 
wed eventually become a verb here means um getting getting wed and <laughs> getting married the practice of getting married or ceremony of that so xing hun described those just in english as a newly wedded couple um yet are is a descriptor of how that looks like um so for newlyweds most likely they look like sparrows um sticking together so this is a visual depiction of sparrow uh, the beacon the, the beaks of sparrow i don't know why this 20 letter 20 um characters used there but okay this is the body of the sparrow the tail the uh, the feathers um uh, so it's a it's a visual almost like a flattened out a sparrow spread out the wingspan um and you can see it's a very symmetrical so that's really a visual depiction of that is commonly seen bird in China. Um, and R is, um, okay, I come up with um, my symbol using this sign and you can see this twirl of the air. So R is the ancient depiction of how pronunciation is made. So basically here is your vocal organs, your mouth, your, your long, like, Having a <laughs> having an airflow coming out of the mouth and form it in a certain way, right? With the tongue's teeth, uh, I mean, just tongue, tongue teeth and lips um, to form the, the the sound, right? And then it goes out. So this vertical line is like the projection, the projecting of the air goes out, and then uh, this horizontal line is a kind of a blocker. So either the teeth or lips kind of blocks the airflow, and then uh, this two, two sides of the, is, is this twirling sign to show, oh, the air is kind of spreading out and not just one uh, jet of air. It's kind of spread out. It has the, uh, the other, um, air flows goes out. So that's kind of a, an ancient pronunciation practice. Just from the characters, we can infer that, uh, speaking was a major function, um, for literature man to capture into the language um, to to show the ideal pronunciation. Um, it's not uh, to pronounce sharply any sound, but to have your airflow evenly distributed so that it's, it's calming, right? It, it gets the message out without upsetting anybody, basically. So this art depicts such a speaking practice. Uh, of airflow going out with some blocks, but the airflow is still, still going out evenly, three jet streams. Um, and eventually this word becomes abstracted of um, the ending of a phrase, kind of like a period because ancient Chinese doesn't have punctuation. So we use certain word that's kind of a, um, just, just take the sound space without giving extra meaning to it. So our, was commonly used at the end of the sentence to finish a, a meaning unit. Um, and then R was, um, well, it could have other, could have other, like in one of the episodes we talked about, um, 不过而而, so we use R twice. It's like just so, so, we translate as so. So in this case, we also, we can use R also as a as a so it's a it's a container word it doesn't have the concrete uh content but it's kind of referring to look it's like this it's kind of english this or that right and so in english it's also uh, a description not an ob object but a kind of a practice or event and we use so to mean to to abstract or to to refer to the whole thing without saying it right Phew, okay, so yet are is like so much like sparrows. So newly weds, um, they behave just so as sparrows. So that's the uh, description, but uh, Chinese sequence it differently. We say yet are like as if they are sparrows. We to we put this so after the sparrows. Okay, so. Xin Huan Yan basically is describing newlyweds, how uh, how they will look like. But okay, as I look into this word, there's a twist of plot. Um, okay, so this frame, this picture de describes the wedding night. 
why? Because you can see she is high, wear this highly decorated headgear, um, and he wear this big red plume flower, probably made from fabric. It's not real flower tied in front of him. So um, it almost like a newly packaged good, <laughs> right? Yeah, waiting to be unpacked. Uh, so it's a new man, right? And this is a new woman as husband and wife. So they have new identities. So something new, something happy, joyous for them. So color red is the symbol of happiness. So in, in Western culture, customarily it's bright, bright wears white, right? Um, in Chinese, totally not so. White is for another type of events, but the red is a color of, I guess red is a color of blood. So it, it shows the vitality. Um, a lot of, um, you know, because of your, your life, so you have red inside you, right? We don't see it, but it's below the surface. So that's the essence of life, the color representing life. And because their function of forming a family is to create a new life. So I guess that's appropriate to use red color. Um, and you can see the birds here, they are mandarin ducks. So mandarin ducks are the symbols mostly uh, in Chinese to represent love birds. In English it's love birds, right? It's a generic love birds. Did we have a, a specification what kind of birds to symbolize love birds? Probably birds are mostly lovingly couples. Uh, we don't exactly know. So it's a generic bird, but in Chinese, it's very specific. It's Mandarin ducks. So then you may ask what sparrows has to do here? <laughs> okay, so it turned out the, the historical origin of the phrase is this sparrows is a place, a, the similar sound place replacer of the original character that is um, uh, also pronounced as yen, obviously, but is it, it's an, it, it means big dining party or gala or a big party. Okay, big party, a lot of people gathers. And that basically describes the wedding ceremony. What people do is like your families gather together to celebrate your, uh, your wedding day. And this gathering was used um, in there. So Xinhuan Yan or this doesn't, the focus was not on the, the couple, not on the newlyweds, the two individuals there forming a one new unit. But this this the original dining party um character, Yan, um, describes this social event of announcing, announcing this um uh, union to your social networks, right? So that yen actually is, it's not about the two individuals, but about the whole, whole network of this big gathering. And this came from the ex-wife of the original story. So the ex-wife was said to be kicked out of the household. So apparently in ancient times, men can divorce a woman anytime at, at will. So the men, at the end of the day, because it's Hun, right, at sunset, are going to marry a new girl, supposedly younger girl, to replace the original wife, right? The original wife already uh, of a certain age, uh, probably lose the luster of the look. Um, so the husband say, mm, I want to have an upgrade. Okay, almost like I get a new iPhone. So this, this husband's practice was kick out the original wife the first wife out of the household in the morning and in the sunset time in the evening, new newlywed invited in. So this comment was came from this quite bitter um, words of the ex-wife who was saying like, okay, the newlyweds, they are going to have a big party. And the remaining, you know, her situation was admitted, uh, what, what, what did, wasn't men mentioned, but, her, this is the beginning of her contrast. Like, okay, now they are having a big party celebrating the new new wife. And look at me, my, the result, what I get, I got, I got kicked out of the household. And so, I mean, according to the story, of course, it's going to add to her pain. It's like she worked so hard to, together with her husband and raise his fortune from poverty to, well-to-do 
and now he was um, he was well to do. He thought he can just get rid of her uh, without being gratitude, things like that. So, okay, it's kind of a stereotypical story of um, the the old relationship and the, and the gender issues over there uh, about marriage. So when I was reading all the origins of the Xinguin Yan, I was quite shocked. So it was not about the sweetness of the newlywed, but it's about the bitterness of the ex-wife who was kicked out of the household. And later on, when people are describing the newlyweds, you know, to put the original like a big dining party, which is a, a social event, um, and then incur like it make people wonder what's the story behind that's um that's too sad right so as a result this sparrow same pronunciation that it describes a bird was brought in to replace the original meaning as a cover up of the original story so kind of a wipe clean of the track of how this expression came into being but this bitterness from the first wife was captured in this phrase um, only when you are looking into uh, the origins. <laughs> and we don't exactly know. It's, it's kind of folklore. We don't know if that's the happening. Um, but this phrase lived on with time, and that's how Chinese describe the newlywed. So nobody, I mean, including me, I never wonder, like, why is sparrow not Mandarin duck? It, it's, not, it's not the symbol of lovebirds in Chinese, but we still use sparrow. And I only discovered that. <laughs> okay, that's Xin Quin Yan Er, Catching Tail of Currency of uh, Thinking by One Word a Day with Sophie. See you another day.